uh, concomitantly, a black or brown student, or for that matter, if any white students were caught in schools in Detroit that were largely black and, black and brown and had uh, lower SAT score averages, no matter how well that student performed, uh, would uh, suffer a disadvantage. Um, there are all kinds of structural inequalities that are built into our system of uh, selective admissions. Part of what we argued in the Michigan case is that, uh, in effect, the uh, ability to take uh, race into account, uh, to pursue diversity, uh, work to offset those inequalities. Um, uh, that's just by way of example. As I said, we could say much more about this. A uh, couple of other things, and then I will sit down. Uh, one is that uh, the case that, uh, uh, that you've heard about, that we all know about, that was in the Supreme Court uh, with respect to firefighters uh, out of New Haven, uh, the Richard case, uh, I also was at the, at the hearings uh, and saw the testimony of the firefighters. Uh, very compelling. Uh, and uh, I think what the New Haven Fire Department should have done, or the city of New Haven should have done, uh, was uh, abandon the test if they were going to do that uh, at a time when it wasn't being applied to any individual. They should have promoted these individuals. That would have been the correct thing to do for a number of reasons. Uh, strategically, it would have been the best thing to do if that was the only interest they were thinking about, but also it wouldn't have impacted these individuals in the way it did. So let me get that off the table um, and say that I think that's what should have been done, but that's not what New Haven did. But the New Haven firefighters case, and this is the real point I'm making, was not an affirmative action case. It wasn't about affirmative action. Uh, it was about whether that test uh, was a valid measure uh, of qualifications. And uh, institutions uh, ought to be able to assess their assessment measures and make those kinds of changes if they think that they have an unnecessary adverse impact. Um, but I don't think that the city did it in a way uh, that, um, uh, that ultimately furthered the cause uh, that it was trying to, to further. Lastly, a uh, word about uh, the nomination of Justice uh, Sotomayor. Uh, she was my high school classmate. Uh, I went to Cardinal Spelman High School in the Bronx, which at the time was one of the best high schools in New York City academically, certainly among the Catholic schools, but you know, beyond that. Um, and the school at the time that I attended, and we were there, was 90% white. Sonia was at the top of the class. Uh, you know, in case you missed the significance of that, everybody was behind her. Uh, white students, black students, Latino students, Asian American students, everybody, she was number one. A lot of the discourse, or some of the discourse during the nomination process questioned her intellectual capacity. Uh, and uh, that was shameful, uh, given her academic record there, uh, at Princeton, at Yale. Uh, her appointment had nothing to do with affirmative action. And shame on anybody who says that it did. Uh, she was painted uh, as a radical, lefty, liberal, uh, that she, uh, because of her service on the board of uh, Pearl Def, somehow or another, was uh, uh, not qualified. Um, uh, and um, you know, I can see, uh, I know that some of you uh, either uh, believe, you know, agree with that argument, uh, or, or uh, even made them. Uh, the, the truth of the matter uh, is, I understand very well what was going on in those hearings. Uh, Sonia was going to be confirmed to the Supreme Court. That was about really staking out who was acceptable uh, in subsequent nominations. Uh, the notion that somebody who was on the board of a civil rights organization, at least a civil rights organization that was not leaning in the way that the Federal Society leans, is somehow unqualified. Uh, Thurgood Marshall couldn't be confirmed to the Supreme Court in this environment. Uh, and so, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to join those issues. Uh, let me finally say that. Um, uh, I come here knowing that uh, most of you, if not all of you, are going to disagree with most of what I say, and that's fine. And I'm going to disagree with you, and that's fine too. Uh, and I sometimes, depending on my mood, relish doing battle. But ultimately, ultimately, uh, I think that uh, we, if we are intellectually honest, uh, must seek uh, some common ground somewhere. Uh, and I don't doubt your love for this country. 
Uh, I hope you don't doubt mine uh, or the people who are aligned with me in the uh, pursuit of what we believe to be racial and social justice. Uh, I think we have to continue to have dialogue. Uh, if we disagree, uh, you know, in the, uh, in the courts, that's fine. Uh, let's uh, disagree. Uh, if we disagree in terms of, uh, you know, our social discourse, that's fine too. Uh, but I do think that we have to continue to try to find uh, some common ground. Um, uh, so I thank you for inviting me uh, here and hope that uh, our discourse furthers that uh, even for a moment. Thank you. Before we have questions from uh, the public, there are a few points I'd like to put to the uh, panelists um, that have been raised in their, uh, in their opening statements. And um, uh, the first I'd like to ask is um, of uh, Peter Kersenow. Uh, you talked about the Gretter case. You talked about Gratz case. We now have the Seattle school case, Kentucky school, school case, and now we have Ritchie. Can you tell me how the Supreme Court is going to handle the next race-based preference case? It depends on the composition, but I think you're seeing a slight tilt in the direction, in a direction away from preferences. And I think you've got um, five justices who are prepared, I think, to um, reassess Grutter, um, possibly. So it depends on the manner in which the case comes up, what the facts are, and you know there's a good possibility. Some people are speculating that um, you know we may have some vacancies in the near future. So I hazard to you know give you a prediction because of the fluid nature of such things in the nomination process. But I do think that we've got a number of justices who are rethinking the uh, the idea of well we only need what is it now 18 more years on which we've got to discriminate on the basis of race. Do you see any particular cases coming up to the Supreme Court to deal with uh, racial issues? Um, I, have, I will confess that I did and can't recall, and probably one of my friends could r remind me of it, but um, I'm not sure that we're going to see anything in the very near future. It depends on you know, how it gets up to whether or not uh, the issue is joined the proper way in the circuit courts. This is a question I'd like to ask. Uh, Ted Shaw and, uh, and uh, Shirley Wilcher, um, we've heard the assertion that um, asser affirmative action doesn't work. And we had President uh, Obama saying that it doesn't do as much good as some people think and it doesn't do as much harm as other people think. Do we have any basis for measuring either the amount of people that affirmative action has helped, and on the other side, the amount of people that affirmative action has hurt. Ted? Well, um, uh, the, uh, there's anecdotal evidence. Um, there's also some statistical evidence. Of course, uh, prior to the Michigan case being decided, uh, there was uh, the uh, Bach and Bowen book, The Shape of the River, uh, which laid out some statistics about the impact of, uh, of affirmative action over the last uh, 40 years or so, at least in the field of selective higher education uh, admissions. Um, uh, you know, there's a whole generation, obviously, of uh, people in this country who uh, went to colleges and universities that once were closed to them, and it didn't happen serendipitously. It didn't happen because those institutions um, uh, just kind of woke up one day and said, let's do things differently. It, be it happened as a consequence of conscious attempts to open their doors. Um, and uh, they've gone on to do all kinds of things, including uh, now, uh, you know, an attorney general, uh, judges, justices. Uh, uh, you know, lawyers, uh, engineers, doctors, physicians across the country. Uh, you know, it's, it's changed now.